And let's see, let's get started here. Boom, like this, and like this, and like this. So first of all, let's go from the very top here. I hope you can see the PowerPoint show. I hope it works. Uh, awesome. I get a thumbs up from the backstage. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so first of all, this is a, a small live session um, with me with uh, some photo tips and tricks for beginners. And uh, I just want to help you guys get your uh, step up the game with photography and hopefully get more creative. Some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today is I try to like divide it into uh, before, during and after a photo shoot. So, you know, what should I do before I go? What can I do when I'm out photo, uh, shooting some photos? And what uh, should I do when I go back as well? Uh, hope get some tips for the editing session. And we're also going to do some Q&A in the, in the end uh, and also a small little challenge. Boom. Nice. So first of all, um, my name is Daniel. I live in the city called Odense in the middle of Denmark. And uh, I am a freelance photographer. I have been doing this for a few years now, uh, now. And I think I've been doing this since like 2016. I kind of started. And in uh, 2018, I became an uh, ambassador for Olympus, which uh, also escalated some of my uh, projects and career with all this. Besides doing all this photography, I also have a big passion for dance and I'm a hip hop dance teacher. So I'm doing that next to all my outdoor trips and all my uh, photography jobs. Uh, I have two bachelor degrees. I've been studying at a university here in Odense, where I used to study sports science and health. And I've also been studying uh, in Norway, where I lived for two years and studied outdoor education. So right now I'm trying to combine my passions for outdoors and photography and dance into one. And the next thing is that I like to photograph a lot, different, a lot of different stuff. Um, <clears throat> mainly I started with, with landscape and traveling. And since then it became more into sports and outdoors, um, like outdoor activities and also dance as a part of my, my dance uh, background. Uh, and uh, I'm also doing a lot of like lifestyle photography, like cooperating with different brands and uh, weddings and also portraits as well. I, uh, I collaborate with uh, different uh, brands and uh, companies such as the Olympus, of course, and also Tahi Outdoors, a kayaking company and uh, some tourism departments for example, Visit Denmark and Visit Fair Islands, and also different outdoor brands such as Echo and Wobens and Nikin, and also a castle here in Denmark where I'm uh, connected to as a wedding photographer. So here are just some, a few examples uh, of my photography. So for example, some weddings and doing some brand shooting for like Echo, uh, which is the photo at the right, and uh, Wobens, uh, an outdoor brand that makes tents and sleeping bags and that kind of outdoor gear uh, on the left. Different tourism uh, departments as well, like Visit Denmark, like this one. And also different sports, uh, especially outdoor sports. Landscape photography uh, is like, one of the things where I used to start, actually, um, I started with landscape photography, especially when I went out traveling and when I studied outdoor education in Norway. Um, and since I came back to Denmark, I've just been out and discovering a lot of Denmark and trying to inspire other people to go explore a lot of this uh, beautiful nature we have back home here as well. Um, and I'm going to talk more about that later as well. Dance as well, it's a, it's a totally new uh, or a totally different uh, genre, you could say that, because you need to be aware of a lot of speed, high speed movement, and you want to keep things sharp. And yeah, I'm going to talk about how you could do that as well. But instead of having a landscape where the sunset is setting very, very nice and slowly, you have plenty of time. When you photograph and dance, it's moving so fast as well. You need to be so much on your marks and portraits as well, working with different uh, people and different brands as well, like uh, the local makeup artist school for in the, this example. So the concept for tonight is that the, the main purpose is to just give you some inspiration and help you to get more creative you, with your photography. Um, and I will try to give you some photo tips that you can use both on your camera, but also on your phone if you are using that. And um, so we're going to talk about just in a minute, we're going to talk about what gear do you need to just get started. 
Um, and I'll try to give you some practical examples uh, in the different processes of both before, during and after. Um, and of, again, please ask if you have any questions. So first of all, let's talk about photography in short. This you can find on the internet. I actually have one printed and have in my camera bag because it's just, it's just such a good reminder. And uh, it's just really nice to have with you because there are like three main parts in photography. When you take a picture, you need light, but you also need, of course, something to say a photograph of. Uh, so you need a, a subject. Um, and in order to take this, you need uh, to be aware of three different things in the camera. First of all, you have the aperture. The aperture is kind of like the lens. If you look through the lens, you, kind of, you can kind of say that you, this is your eye. And as you see this round circle here, um, the, this is like the F stop. Um, it's the depth of field. So the, the lower the number, the less depth of field you'll have. The higher the number, the more of the, of the photo will be in focus. So for example, if you want to take a landscape photo, just uh, as is, it has is, uh, been illustrated with the person and the mountain, you get all this focus if you are at the F22, for example, or F16, or similar to that. But when you go more to the right on the, on the scale, the lower the number, the more the person it's, uh, in, the, in the photo will be in focus. It's very similar as well to, to your own eye because we have the iris here, where when you are, where, for example, when you're out in a sunny, bright day, then the iris gets very small because there's so much light coming in. When you go into a dark room, your iris also gets very big to let more light in, which means that if you have, uh, if you are able to do that with your lens on your camera, you can get this nice depth of field. So when you see those nice portraits where you have like a person in, in, uh, in focus and the background is very, very blurry, it's probably been taken with, a, with an aperture that is with a low number. I hope you're with me. Can be uh, quite uh, technical, quite fast, but just remember small number, less thing, less uh, focus, large number, a lot in focus. That could be one rule of thumb, you could say. The next thing, if you, then you have, you have your subject and you are aware of, okay, we have the aperture, how much of the photo do you want to be in focus? Then the next thing is, what shutter speed should I use? If it's a person or a vehicle or anything else that is in motion, you would really like to have a fast shutter speed because then you can freeze the movement. So for example, here it describes it very, very well. If you are around a thousand uh, of, a, of a second, then you have to, then you're able to freeze the, the movement. But when you go over to like an eighth of a second, so like almost like very, very uh, slow, you can say that, then you get more and more blurry. So you need to be aware of that as well when you take your photo. Most of the time, when you put the, the camera into auto, the, com the camera itself or the phone would be able to like calculate what it, what it would, uh, would need to get the, the, a good photo. But it's really, really nice to be able to get the knowledge of this and also be able to use it yourself. So after the shutter speed, you have the aperture, you have the shutter speed. Then the next thing you need to be aware of is the ISO. The ISO or ISO is, is uh, the light sensitivity. Sensitivity, sorry. <laughs> so the lower the ISO is, the more clean a photo you could get. The higher the number, the higher ISO, the more uh, sensitivity the sensor needs to be and the more grainy the, the photo will be. Because when you look into a camera, you can try to do this here. I'll see if you could see that. Hopefully I try to move it a bit around. Can you see that? Mitch helps me out. I'll try to do this in here you have the sensor and the sensor, I try to like do like this. So you can hopefully, yeah, you can probably see it here. Yeah. This is what it, what captures the, the, the whole photo. So it's, so the important thing is in order to get as much detail on this, on the sensor, which is also in your phone. Um, the more detail you want to get on this, like it's all depending on which shutter speed do you have, which aperture, and also which ISO. So if you go into a dark room where there's not enough light, then you might have to use your aperture and like go down to a low number so you can get 
as much light in as possible, just like your eye when you go into a dark room. And the shutter speed, okay, maybe might might be a bit slower shutter speed, so you can have more time to get more light into the lens, into the camera. And the last thing is you can go higher up on your ISO to get more light as well, because it gets more sensitive to light. Again, the whole the balance and the the every every photographer has this uh, has this um, reflections about about uh, what to do with this because the higher ISO, the more grainy a photo you'll get. It's all personal different uh, preferences, but most of the time people would like to go for a cl as clean a, uh, a photo as possible. So I hope you're still with me. You got three things. Aperture, you got shutter speed, and you got the ISO. You need to be aware of those and the balance between those three parts. So then you know, okay, we got this. Now we are going to get on to the next thing. Because when you take a photo, there are so many uh, different uh, preferences as well, but a rule of thirds is a really, really good one to be aware of. And most of the cameras can actually show it on your display and even your phone as well, it can show that. So the rule of thirds is, as you see here, we have some, uh, some connections here where at least uh, uh, some experts have said that this is where these, uh, these connection points are places where our eyes normally uh, uncon unconsciously go to. Like when we see, when we look at a photo, that's a nice balance right there. So we would like to, when, we, when we're trying to make a composition of a photo, we would try to get the subjects or the subjects in that, uh, in that part and also to, in order to create a balance in the photo. There are some different shapes as well. There's not only this shape, in the rule of thirds, but there are some different ones as well, but this is very nice. It's just a nice general rule to know. So if we take this photo, for example, we have the person in the rule of thirds and in, in the third part here. So it's a really good thing to, to be aware of because even in this, uh, in this photo, we have a person looking over something and when we view it, then we would actually, as a, as a viewer, we would like to unconsciously like look the direction of the person. So it's really nice that there is some open space. It would be a totally different photo if the person stood the other way and there was nothing to look at, if you know what I mean. So in this case, person in the, in the third part here and some nice open space here. Um, but there's more to it. This is one of my own photos here. And as an example, I tried to put the grids on here. So here, boom, you can see uh, the water, uh, kind of levels down on the lower part of the thirds and the mountain and the trees kind of like make a line up in the top as well as the lines uh, within the boats and the, the, uh, the lines go like this. It kind of like divides the, the photo into different areas. So in the lower corner, lower right corner, you have the boathouse, for example. In the middle, you have uh, in the lower part, you have the boats and you also in the middle, Part, you have the mountain in the background as well so you can you have like different dimensions and and a lot of depth so another thing is that a good photo a good photo is a very uh, personal thing as well but most of the time you would say a good photo has something in the foreground something in the middle and something in the background because that gives a lot of depth in the photo so when you go out and take photos yourself try to play with the foreground as well I'll have some uh, I have some more examples that I'll show you just in a minute. But this is just to give you an example on how it could look. So let's go to the next part here because now we are in the before we're going out in the process. Okay, what do I need? I would need to figure out okay, what camera do I want to bring and do I have some different lenses I would like to bring? Do I want to bring a, a zoom lens, for example, where I could just stand at the same, if you can see that, yeah, like this, you can zoom out in, um, where I can just be at the same place and get a lot of different uh, range of motions and, uh, and a lot of flexibility in a, in a zoom? Or do I want to have a, more like a prime lens, which has often more like a better glass in it and gives the sharpness, uh, but you need to move yourself if you want to take photos. That depends on what you're going for and what kind of like what kind of photos you're going for and where you're going as well. 
always make sure to bring extra batteries or a power bank. It's really nice. Don't stand out there and be like, yeah, I got this amazing shot. And then your battery dies and be like, oh my God. So always remember to charge from home. Before you go out, bring extra batteries. Those few grams that, it, that a battery expiry uh, weighs, it's definitely, definitely worth it. And in the end, also in order, depending on where you're going and how flexible you need to be, then make sure to carry a, a practical bag for your camera and for the other essentials that you need. If you're gonna go hiking or in the just out traveling or whatever, just make sure that, uh, that you have all the gear that you need and that you have the space for it. That's, uh, that's at least my experience. So the next part here is, again, what do you need? I need a camera. It can be a phone or it can be a digital camera, for example, depending on your preferences. You would also have to uh, have something to, to take a photo of. What, what would that be? Would it be a mountain or a sunset or maybe a person? Um, so you need a subject as well. And of course, you need to maybe go to a certain location. So a good thing is if you already know where you want to go, and when you want to go, then make sure to check the weather forecast, especially if it's outdoors. I'm doing a lot of main, mainly uh, outdoor photography, which means that, okay, I need to be aware of the, of the weather forecast. Is it going to rain? Um, what time is the sunset? If I want a certain kind of photo, a certain kind of, certain kind of light in my photos. Um, Google Maps is also really, really good, uh, a really good uh, tool to use because Using, checking out those satellite images can either give you uh, some information about, okay, how does it look? Uh, which, uh, which direction does, if it's, uh, let's say, along a coastline, which direction is the coastline going? Or can a park close nearby or similar as that? It's really, really nice to know. And it's nice to know before you go out instead of when you're already at the location. But also, it can also give you some interesting um, inspiration about the perspectives or maybe some interesting backgrounds as well. So weather forecasts and Google Maps, really, really, really nice to know. So what is in my camera bag? For example, um, it could look like this for me, uh, depending on where I'm going and what, uh, what I'm doing. Um, this was from my trip, uh, from my travel to China uh, in October and November no, 2019. Um, where I brought my smaller camera, uh, the EM5 Mark III, uh, which looked like this. I brought this and a few different lenses. I had some, uh, some of the uh, prime lenses and I had some zoom lenses as well because I went out on a two month trip and I didn't really know where, I had some ideas about where, what kind of photos I wanted to, to get out there. But at the same time, I also knew that would, uh, there would be some new interesting situations as well. So I need to be, Bit flexible so i brought some different stuff as well so landscape photography let's talk about that because it's uh, it's getting summer right now and uh, maybe you guys want to get out uh, outside and uh, shoot some of the nice spring or summer uh, landscapes that is getting a uh, getting more and more green out there so when you do a landscape photography uh, think about the aspect ratio like think about um, whether it's like a square photo or maybe even like a 16 or 16 times nine, you know, just like when you take your phone and you put it down because you could make a panorama kind of uh, photo. If you just crop the photo like that, then you get a, a nice big landscape feel uh, to it. Uh, regarding the lights, you also need to be aware that it's most uh, most likely in natural light. So in, in natural light, so be aware of the sunset, be aware of, is the sun, are you taking photos straight into the sun or could you maybe be able to like get the sun in from the side or behind you? So you actually light up the, uh, the landscape in, in this way. If you look at the light and look at the shadows in this photo, be aware of that the light is, uh, is coming from the sun from the right side of the photo, which gives some really hard light on some of the uh, mountain faces, but also some, some, uh, some shadows. And you can use that creatively or just be aware of it. It's just nice to know. Um, so yeah, but another aspect, here are just the stats. The, here's the camera that I used and the lens that I used. I used a wide angle lens. It's a seven to 14 millimeter. It's called in this, when you compare to, uh, normally you always compare to a full frame. 
then it's uh, the double double the size. So it's like a 14 to 28 millimeter. Um, you see, I had I used the the aperture f16 to get a lot in focus, and since it was a nice bright day, then it the the shutter speed was uh, one. 1,600 of a second, and I just used the ISO 200. But another aspect in order to get a nice landscape photo is try to use something that you can like create a scale with, for example, people. So the question is, if you look at this photo, can you spot the person? Maybe you can. It's, I'm just saying it's a yellow jacket, if you spot it. And the yellow jacket, I hope you can see my mouse, is, is standing right there. So having, having a person maybe this far away or maybe even closer makes a, a photo, can make a photo quite interesting, both because it uh, creates something uh, recognizable for, for the viewer. It's like, oh, a person, I know how a person is and what a person looks like, but also like the, with, the, with the scale in, in mind, because uh, the viewer knows okay how how big is a person you know and all that so so it creates this kind of feel of of this big big landscape um, you can also use other other items or i don't know cars or similar just to create a scale because uh, if if you take it out of the, the person out of the photo it could get a get more uh, get more confusing of okay how big is this landscape is it like such a magnificent landscape as the Faroe Islands which this photo is, is from uh, is, but it's, yeah, it's really nice. So another tip, bring a friend, bring a, a model if you can, <laughs> or maybe bring yourself and then you can just put the, the, the camera on a tripod. So light, light is essential. This, uh, this photo is from a magnificent morning. One of my favorite sunrises in, in Denmark is from the Northern part of Denmark uh, around this, um, this uh, lighthouse called Rubia Knud, Rubia Knud Lighthouse. And with like an early morning uh, and you've made, you can, hopefully you can see the, the morning fog over the, it's like just drifting over, over the sand dunes here. Um, so the thing is the golden hour is something that a lot of landscape photographers, especially, uh, and just a lot of photographers in general really, really like because it gives a nice, soft, warm light. And it just adds something different to uh, to the setting and to the mood compared to if we go back to the other light that was taken during the afternoon in the summer. It's very, very hard light, very, very hard uh, shadows versus, again, more soft light. So being aware of what kind of photo do I want to take? Do you want a photo with like more harsh light or do you want like a nice soft one? then you need to be aware of what time of the day that you want to photograph. So using the golden hour, which is normally like an hour, an hour ish before sunset or after sunrise uh, is usually a really, really good time as well. So be aware of that using the golden hour, it can really make your, your photos that extra niceness. Okay. So that's the landscape, but now what about persons? Do I want to take portraits? And you can, of course, and you just need to be aware of that as well. So the thing you could think about is, for example, what would I, what would I like to put in focus? What subject? Is it the mountains? Is it the landscape? Or is it the person? Or maybe even the person in the surroundings in order to create a story? Because that's something that I will talk to you about just in a minute as well. A photos that creates a story makes the viewer reflect and makes the viewer oftenly, like most often more interested as well. So make sure that your photo tells a story. So for example, again, this is from my, uh, from my trip to China. I was just walking around the streets and just me as, uh, as a Scandinavian walking around in another country, I was having my, what can you say, my in my, my curious glasses on, if you could say that with my camera and just looking around and just, just trying to see what, what stories that were, that were told uh, around me. So, um, and again, just the stats here, just for the knowledge for you who would like to, to see that, which, uh, which lens I used, I used this one. It's very similar to a 90 millimeter. If 
you compare it to a full frame. Um, and then, yeah, the ISO and the shutter speed. But again, the Fair Islands landscape photography, again, for this, again, trying to use uh, people in the image to create a perspective and to show the scale of the landscape. And uh, in this situation, we were very, very lucky because uh, we even had the birds flying in and just straight over the waterfall. So that was uh, quite lucky as well. Um, so yeah, be aware of that. Again, use birds, use animals, use uh, houses or use people to show the scale of the landscape. Mm -hmm. The same thing here, play with silhouettes in the, in the sunset here. You see the, uh, the, uh, the stats on the camera that I used here, the ISO and the F22. I wanted everything to be in focus. And this, at this photo here, I was taking, uh, I was taking the photo straight into the sun. If you look at the sun just at the very tip of the mountain, you might see some, some light stripes here. You can call it like a sun flare. Um, it's something that you can play with as well. So it's, it's like uh, when you take a photo up into the sun, then you can create this effect called a sun, a sun flare, where you get those lights, the, the, the light beams, if you could say that. And you often get those when you go high on the, on the, on the aperture at least on, on the Olympus cameras, I know, but it's something that you can go out, go out and play with. So the big question is, what should your picture tell? What kind of story should it tell? Is it the person or is it the landscape or is it both? Depends on what you prefer. Because now let's say we've just been back and now we are out. So now we're gonna go out and play with new perspectives. We're gonna try to use uh, the framing so like, as I said before, you have the, something in the front uh, or in the foreground and something in the middle and something in the background of a photo and try to be aware and take a, an active choice about what should be in focus. So let's try to play around with that. So for example, sunsets, that's, some of the, that's one of the, the questions that I've got um, regarding to photography, like how to take cool photos of sunsets. It's uh, it depends on what you want to what you want to do and what story you would like to tell. In this particular photo, I try to play around with silhouettes. So again, another a tip for the sunsets: try to underexposure use it uh, use it to use the underexposure to create those silhouettes. You can do it quite easily on the camera, and you can as well uh, in the on the phone as well. I think in the phone, you will probably try to, uh, you know, you can press the, the screen and then you can try to see like, okay, focus on this. If you focus on the light of the sky, then you, uh, most of the time you would get very, very dark uh, in the shadows and you can uh, hereby create silhouettes. So play around with that if you want. It's quite fun. And again, play around with focus. What would you like to, to, to show to the viewer? Um, in this particular uh, photo, you can see I have used the f1.4 and I focused on the edge of the of the boat on the right side here. So you can actually see the the, the boats in the background they're quite blurry, um, which means that they are kind of like the background they are kind of like telling the story as well and uh, uh, together with the with the colors in the sky, but the main focus is on the details of the boat right here. So it kind of gives you the sense of maybe hopefully standing there yourself. Also try to play with new perspectives and try to see if you can find any creative angles. In this particular photo, I, I found uh, like a metal wheel on one of the fishing boats and there was some holes in it. And I was trying to like, look, oh, hey, maybe I could actually almost fit a whole fishing boat in there if I took the photo through that. So I've tried to play around with that because again, then the viewer's eye is going to get, uh, get directed straight at the main subject, which uh, in, this, in this photo is, uh, is the boat. So that's another place, uh, another thing to do in this, uh, this kind of environment, you can say. You are in, uh, in China taking a photo of something, what can you say, something quite famous, something quite uh, highly photographed subject. Uh, this is the, from the, the Forbidden City in Beijing. 
So trying to find a new creative angle or new perspective on the, what can you say, uh, a, a popular uh, subject is quite fun to do. So instead of taking the photo that everybody else takes from the same angle, then try to move around and try to find a new perspective or a new angle on that subject and play around with the framing as well. You can see, I just put my camera into uh, the hole in the, in the fence here and try to play around um, to get a bit more framing in the front. So you have in the front, in the foreground, you have this, uh, the fence here. And in the middle, you kind of like have the, uh, the small stream here, the water. And in the background, you have the main subject of that house. Another thing you can try to do is when you take photos of people. Because when you go out and take photos of, for example, if you are traveling and you take photos of people on the street or similar, then uh, try, to, try to, to have a look around and try to see if you can anticipate any possible interesting activities or maybe some stories happening around you. Um, but also in that way, you should also be aware and be polite. Make sure to respect the uh, people's boundaries as well. Um, either keep a distance or maybe ask if, depending on the situation, depending on the relation as well, ask if you may take a photo or maybe try to, if you want the authentic photo, maybe take some photos first and then go and say, hey, I hope it's okay. I just took this photo of you. I really, really like it. And maybe even offer them to send uh, the photo to them. Most of the time when I've done that, I really got a positive response. So it, it has definitely helped for me. So, but just be aware of that when you take photos of people. I have some uh, examples here. For example, uh, playing around with, with, with light and shadow as well. For example, uh, the black and white photo with, uh, with this man eating his lunch in the, in the warm autumn sun in, the, in one of the cities in China. Or this girl uh, sitting at the fence and having her parents taking a photo uh, of her in, in uh, some traditional clothes. That was what I was told there. It was just uh, some interesting stories when I was walking around there. Or maybe the photo here of uh, a monk in one of the temples in Beijing, sitting in his uh, surroundings, sitting and meditating. And again, back to the, to the group of a uh, older man who was sitting and having a very intense game of a board game here and like they were yelling at each other like the like it was really getting intense and you know again try to anticipate it be like okay someone is really thinking about what should the next move be and someone apparently took a wrong move or similar i don't know but try to be your be fast on the shutter here and try to see if you can capture those reactions and uh, make sure that these, these photos together, they can tell a story. So it doesn't have to be one single photo that tells a story, but maybe multiple uh, photos can tell a small story together. So again, a few tips what a, show, what a photo should be able to do. First of all, try to create a mood or a feeling with the viewer. Try to uh, maybe even tell a story or maybe even be informative to be aware of, okay, should this just be a, a photo that is like um, a sense of art, maybe a piece of art telling something uh, very, what can you say, very um, abstract, or should it be more direct telling a certain story? For example, this photo, I can say, like again, ask yourself, what should your photo do? What, what can, uh, how can you do it with your own photos? For example, this photo was taken in uh, Spain. Uh, it's an, uh, an old uh, highway bridge that was uh, closed, but uh, since it was closed, they had built, uh, 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 turned it into a cool climbing wall. And there, there, was, there were these guys uh, living in their vans and driving out here in the weekend and just climbing around in the sun before uh, having their families coming over with like dinner and making a, a common dinner, to, uh, a common uh, lunch together in the sun and with like kids and their dogs and like it was such a cool thing such a cool vibe there but there was this guy here he was very very dedicated he was up early in the morning and he was out climbing these and he was a really really uh, talented climber i could tell i talked to him uh, afterwards as well and when i saw him climbing i he came down and just took a break and i just noticed his uh, feet he was having this tattoo called hakuna matata on his feet 
And I was like, dude, hi, sorry, may I take a photo of your feet? And he, and he was like, yeah, you can do that. So, so because I was just, I just, uh, yeah, you know, again, photo can say more than a thousand words, as I say. But after talking to this guy and just hearing about his passion for climbing and his lifestyle, living in his van and he with his girlfriend and he and he had this uh, his uh, his dog as well, it was just so cool to like meet those kind of people. And yeah, I just after talking with him and seeing this tattoo, Kakuna Makasa uh, Matata, it was like yeah. I totally feel you, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so that's something that you could do as well. But again, make, just make sure to ask people and respect the boundaries when you do that. Again, what should you do? A photo, create an atmosphere um, try to see if you can create a photo where whether it feels like for the viewer that oh, the viewer of the photo is feeling that he or she is sitting there by like themselves sitting in and watching the sunset from that kayak, for example, so giving that feeling that the, it, it helps a lot. And again, doing maybe a photo series, like use several photos to create or maybe tell a story uh, can help a lot as well, can give a lot of inspiration as well. For example, this, so you have, you have the night here with the night sky and the, and the colorful sunset or you have the morning, the early morning with the sunrise, watching it from, uh, from the sleeping bag and cooking the, the breakfast here afterwards. Star sky, ooh, star photography, it's a whole chapter by itself. And I actually have, my plan is that my next live session is gonna be about that. I'll let you guys know when, when, I, when I have a date about this. So don't worry, but uh, I will, I would love to dive down into this because this is something that is so fun to play around with, I think. And it's something that you can really get creative with. Either try to capture the Milky Way or maybe even a meteor shower, which there is tonight, actually. There's something called the Lyrids uh, meteor shower this evening. And uh, it's actually possible to see up to 20 uh, meteors per hour. So check that out when, uh, when we're done here, then uh, it should be good. So, um, it's quite unique actually. But then back to this, you just been out, you've been out taking a lot of photos. What should you do now? Okay, now we're back. Now we should be able to put our photos maybe into the computer or do it straight on our phone and try to edit them. And uh, the thing is that one of my experiences is that sometimes I go out and I shoot a lot of photos and sometimes I forget to like just point out my favorites so it's a really good thing to try to do that or else you can just sit and edit a thousand photos and you won't use all of them anyway, most of the time. So try to go, go back and try to find your favorites and just edit them. So you try to avoid overloading and you can use different editing software. There's a lot of different stuff out there, but one that works very, very good is something called uh, Adobe Lightroom. And there are two versions. There's one called uh, Lightroom CC, which is, both for computer, but also for phone or for a tablet. And the phone slash tablet version is actually a free one uh, that you can use. Uh, and it just gives you a lot of extra uh, opportunities to, to create this personal touch. There's also another one called Lightroom Classic, which is a more like a desktop version. And it has a bit more features than this Lightroom CC. But if you're all new to photography, I would definitely say you can easily use the Lightroom CC. It has plenty of options and it gives you so much flexibility as well. So that is what you could do. So the thing is the photo editor, you can, uh, you can get that from your app store or uh, wherever you get your apps from. And most of the time it's a free version. Um, I, have, I have the paid version, so I might have some extra options, I think, but just try to download it, it's free. It's really, really fun and it gives you so much more. Um, and now it's time to try to play around with it. So let's just imagine that we've been out together, we've been out photographing and we have been out uh, shooting some different photos. And I'll try to show you how that Lightroom editing software works on, uh, on one of the photos. And um, yeah, I'll just try to show you some different basics that you can use. There's a, a very good auto function you can work with. As a, as a basic, you can also play around with contrast, exposure, and the color adjustments, and lots and lots of more.
So let's try to do that. Uh, boom, before we go for my photo tips here, boom, let's go. I'll try to share my screen with another, another thing. Before I do this, do you have any questions now? I've been talking so much right now, but please, if you have any questions, you are more, oh, and Emil, he's just the best. Thanks, Emil. I can see that you are also answering. Thank you so much. You're getting a lot of compliments, by the way. Okay, that's good. <laughs> oh, fair honest, yeah. I'm just, sorry, I'm just looking quickly through your, your, your chat. Um, you are more than welcome to, uh, to raise your hand or speak to me if you have any questions. If you dare, it's okay. If not, then I'll try to go to the live room, but just to give you 30 seconds or less. Liban, you have a question. Yes, I do. Hi, Daniel. Hi, friends. Uh, can Daniel, you unmute yourself, please? Uh, can you hear me? I can't hear you, buddy. Oh, right. Awesome. Uh, Daniel, question. Um, I should have some. I can oh. hear you now. Sorry. Try again, buddy. Buddy, buddy. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Great. Yeah. Uh, it's so nice to actually speak to you. Um, yeah. My question... I was trying to take some notes on on the tips that you have been giving. Will you be able to um, share those tips or your slideshow, something, some paperwork material available, so like to go back and revisit, or is just yeah. something that you will not share? Yeah, of course, I would like to share that. Yeah, awesome. I can. Uh, yeah, I can try to uh, like either send it by email, or I can also try to show it. I'll try to make a uh, make one in. I'm, I just made a highlight with with live sessions on my Instagram. And uh, I could try to put out there on every single stance. If I uh, like this, I'm right now, I'm recording this live session. So I will put it up on my YouTube. And uh, besides that, I'll also try to share the, the slides in a, in a nice, easy way as well. I'll let you guys know on the Instagram as well. Really good question, Lieben. And good to see you, my friend. To all, to all of us, it's a good friend from uh, New York. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining, man. Oh. <laughs> Cool. Another, anybody else has any questions? Sebastian, I see your hand. Yes. Also. Hi, Sebastian. Good to see you, man. Can you, you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Uh, nice, nice, uh, nice seeing you again, Daniel. Um, hey, everybody. And, uh, hello to everyone else. I just want to ask you simply, um, lately I've been really inspired by star photography and long exposure shots. So mm -hmm. I was thinking, is it possible to 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 to, to take star uh, photos or rather long exposure shots while you are in the frame? Because I know when you take a long exposure shot, you have a high shutter speed, right? Mm -hmm. But are you also able to set a timer before that shutter speed starts to be able to you know maybe paint in the, like some, with some light or you know to make that sort of scale uh, where yourself are in the frame picture? Yeah. Good question, buddy. Good question. Uh, yeah, it is possible. And uh, of course, depending on if you're using a your phone or using your camera, I would, for long exposure, I would probably say use a camera. Uh, I would, and one of the things for, especially star photography is um, you would need to place the camera on something steady. For example, if you have yeah. a tripod, yeah. you, know, your own, you know, like building stuff on a table or a chair, whatever. That's one thing. Make sure the camera is steady. That's step one. Step two, if you have a camera where you have a lens, uh, if you can exchange lenses, try mm -hmm. to get uh, a wide angle lens. So as wide as possible. This is like a fisheye. This is like a go, this lens is very similar to like a GoPro. You, you, most of you guys probably know that, you know, very wide angle. Because then you get more star sky. Um, or if not, then just make sure to put the, the, the lens, the, whatever lens you have on make it sure that the aperture is as low as possible, you know, so the, so the number is as low as it can get. Mm -hmm. And then, um, if you would like to take a uh, star photos where the stars are not, what can you can say, drawn, or, you know, like, be, yeah, mm -hmm. light yeah, light trail, before we do the light trails, if you know what I mean. Yeah. This the time, I would say, make sure to, to, uh, to, to do maximum, I would say 20, 25 seconds or so. Maybe okay. even 20. Maximum 20. So, so the more seconds, the better. Yeah. yeah. So an, or normally when I take when I take uh, light uh, star, sky, star sky photography, when I do that, I'll try to get my wide angle lens on. And it's it's down to 1.8 uh, 
So if you have a lens that goes this far down, it's really good because it makes it makes uh, it lets more light in. So it's very much like your eye. You know, you go into a dark room, you widen your iris, right? It's very similar to that. So you want as much light as possible to get into the camera, and within those twenty seconds or so. Uh, and a good tip is if you can put a timer on on your camera as well, maybe twelve, let's say ten seconds or so, then you can run out. And, and stand where you want to be if you want to be in the frame. Or at least, that's what I do, I put like a two second delay on it so I avoid camera shake. It doesn't has to be much, but sometimes it's just that that thing about pressing a shutter can ruin a whole picture. And the whole issue is that you wait for 20 seconds or maybe even more before you're discovered and be like, fuck, damn, you know? So it's really nice. Make sure to put like a two second delay on your shutter when you do that to, to avoid those uh, things. And then when it's night, it's not so much light. That means that you might have to uh, put up the ISO, but it should be, it should be all good. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's worth it. So if you go out and I can see you have, we have a Canon and use, yeah. maybe, try to play around with ISO 2000, try to go up to 3000, maybe even more, try to take the same kind of photo but with different kind of ISO settings, just to go home afterwards and be like, okay, this was really good. This was, okay, way too dark. This was, might be enough, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great, thank you, thank you. Welcome, and again, I, I have like a whole, I actually have a whole PowerPoint about this subject by itself. So this will be the next live session. Actually, we should have done that today because since today there's a meteor shower, then you could just run out and do that. So if you yeah. want to take photos of the meteor shower tonight, like I might, I might even do that. It's like it starts and it doesn't start in one hour, but in a few hours, if you're staying up late, then you could go out, try to put your camera pointing toward the northeast. You can probably like just try to Google it. The Lurid Meteor Shower. L yeah, Lurid, L U L Y R E D, you know? Nice. Then you can go out and try to do that. Okay? Great. Okay, Great. I will do that. Awesome, Sebastian. Thank you for it. You're welcome, buddy. Cool. Anybody else? I'm looking here. No. Okay. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Is there, are there any uh, questions on the? Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. And again, like I, I'm recording this as well. So I'll put this in uh, my YouTube channel. You are welcome to, to check that out as well. There will there are more videos coming there as well. It's going to be interesting. So you're more than welcome to ask questions, but now I think it's time for us to continue to the Lightroom editing session. Let's go over to that. Let's see here. I'll try to share my screen again here. So let's do this. Boom. And I've got uh, a lot of different photos, by the way. Thanks a lot for you to you guys who have uh, been uh, sending in photos for me to edit. It's been like, I just thought it could be a nice way to include you guys. So instead of editing my own photos, it could be fun to just show uh, the editing examples on some of your photos. So I've chosen the photo here. We are in the Lightroom, the Lightroom CC. You see, uh, you have this over here, uh, the uh, different settings here. You can change the light, all this. And even like, even this, uh, the editing software here, you might see there's like a guy popping up some once in a while. I have two photos here that, I, that I've chosen to try to do a little edit on. We have a sunset photo here and we have a forest photo here as well, like taken straight into the sun, which is quite interesting. So it, it can give some really nice details. Um, just want to show you quickly, what can we do? We can do a lot of stuff, for example, you see this pops up on auto settings, uses the power of artificial intelligence to analyze your photo, blah, blah, blah. It's very nice. So if you want, you could play around with just say, okay, this, if I press auto, okay, boom, that, then the, the artificial, artificial intelligence would say, okay, I would probably edit like this. You can either choose to be, okay, that's cool. You can do that. Or you can also just say uh, command C or controls control Z and be like, ah, well, I just start myself. But it's nice to like get a to get a sense of okay, how could it look like? Okay, it could look like this. Then you see like the the lights, the, the shadows here, for example. Yeah, you see the differences. If you are in doubt, by the way, a good tip, if you are in doubt about what this certain aspect does, then just try to go all the way up 
I'll go all the way down to see the difference. It gives such a good, uh, it's such a nice idea. You can go down with the highlights to see the, the, if it go up in the highlights, it gets more blown out, you say. So you don't really sense the, the color as a blue or the orange, but if you go all the way down, you get more of the orange colors out of the photo. You could do that. I was like, yeah, let's, let's pl try to play with this because that's the beauty of a sunset or a sunrise. It's the different colors in the, in the sky, I think. Contrasts, I'm just trying to go all the way up and I'm trying to go all the way down. So you can see the differences, it creates some depth as well when you get the contrasts here, you see? So just I'm just playing a bit around with this. And of course, the exposure itself, well, when we see this all the way down, it goes all black here, okay? So we can play around with this. Shadows, hmm. the question is, would I like to see, to see the whole boat or would I like to see just the silhouette? Depends. Let's just try to see, we would like to see a little bit of the boat, just trying to play with a, bit, a little bit around with that. The white balance, if you take a photo in raw or in JPEG, there's like two different, um, two different ways of taking a photo. That, how, to, how to explain that shortly? Hmm. Raw photo is like the raw image, like the raw material. The camera just opens up its lens. You can say that, opens up the eye, just sucks in all the information that it can get through the light. And then it just keeps it there, doesn't do anything about it. And then when you take it, it's stored on the on the memory card, put it into put it into your computer, just like this. Then you have so much different stuff you can edit with. Okay, so for example, here it also allows you to even do different settings with the light. It's like, oh, I can choose daylight, or I can choose like different, it's like different color temperatures in the white in the in the light. So a raw image is just taking a photo, doing nothing. The camera does nothing to it, but just allows you to to use it. If you take a JPEG uh, photo, it's, it can work really, really good as well. But the thing is, uh, when you take a photo, then the artificial intelligence or the computer, you can say that in the camera or in the phone, uh, kind of like creates um, the colors and the shadows and all that in the photo itself. So it kind of like makes the photo in camera, if, it, if that makes sense kind of similar to pressing the auto uh, button. Then it will say, boom, this is how it would look like. I think that's what the camera says. The cool thing is then you're almost like 90% done. You can almost just do some small details if you want. And especially if you don't want to spend that much time on editing, then it should be fine. But if you want to edit a lot on the photo, then it kind of like compresses it so much that it's like a smaller, uh, you have less to work with. So if you want to create your own thing, make sure to take raw. You can get so much more information out of, of the sky, the colors of the sky, for example, in a photo like this. But, uh, but if you take it in JPEG, you, can't, you, you don't have the same um, opportunities, you can say that. But again, it depends on what you want. If you want like a photo straight out of camera that works, boom, you can go for JPEG. But if you want to work with it, go for RAW. Cool. Sebastian, do you have a question? Or is that on a new hand? Or Yes. Cool. Um, just, just real quick. Um, yeah. I don't know if you can see me. I can maybe. see. You. I can see it. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, it's just because um, uh, in terms of white balance, I have a I have a video camera. I actually have an Osmo Pocket which I use to film videos yeah. on, and this one which I take photos on. Yeah. And uh, I haven't been using this camera a lot, um, but I noticed with my video camera, I'm able to set the white balance before I shoot. Um, if that's the same on a camera. Uh, which do you prefer? Do you prefer just taking maybe maybe auto white balance and then just uh, setting the, uh, the, uh, the the white balance that you want uh, in post or setting the white balance before you take the picture? Yeah, depends. Um, on my camera, I, I can choose like auto or I can choose like sunny or I can choose shade or I can even choose like fluorescent, like, you know, depending on the, on the yeah. color of the light if you're indoors. If you if you have the if you're okay with like having changing it and be aware of that, uh, then make sure, yeah I would definitely say try to try to change it uh, depending on the the circumstances where you are because the issue could be if you have if you have the white balance set to sun for example and you're indoors then mm -hmm. all your all your, uh, your photos turns very very warm very orange like it looks very weird but you can also just put it on auto and then it should work. 90% of the, of the time, it should work fine. And then you can always change it in post-production as well. 
Do you shoot? Do you shoot most in auto? No, I just. Or does, or does that depend on if if it's sunny or whatever? Yeah, I would say when I'm indoors, it, depending on if I'm moving, for example, at a wedding, I can move into different rooms and different lightings and all that, and I just put it in auto because then I don't have to think about it. But if I'm mainly outdoor I'm, and it's a bit of a sunny day, maybe a bit cloudy or whatever, then I'm mainly, I most of the time put it on sun on the on the sun white balance. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. So back to the editing. So you have this, you can see this, uh, this number here, not to get too much into detail, but the number here is like the color temperature. You see, I go up here, it goes high number, it gets warmer. If I go down, it gets colder and the numbers also get colder, uh, lower, sorry. So, but you can choose this, you know, you maybe you choose as shot, boom, it's very close to daylight here. Daylight is normally like 5,500, as you see here. It's just a nice thing to know. Um, if you want it warmer, boom, you can go maybe for cloudy, it's a thousand more. Shade, it's a bit warmer as well. Sometimes, especially when I do when I do uh, sunset uh, shots, I like to, get to, to try to get the warm feeling out of the photo. So I'll try to maybe go around here, maybe even more depending on the shots, but I can like try to play around with here, a little bit around with this. Uh, the vibrance, you can try to do this. You see the colors here, boom, boom. And the saturation, you see this? It's very, very saturated and very, very not saturated. I would say most of the time, my advice would be try to mainly play with, with vibrance because the saturation can get very, very like too much. It can get, it's, uh, it's the whole thing about it can get a bit too, um, to what can say non-realistic, but depends on what feeling that you want to get. But you can play around with it. You can also go a bit down if you want to be more like a faded look as well. So, but I would definitely say, if you want to play around with the colors, try to go mainly for the vibrance. Effects, there's something called clarity I would like to show you. I just give you some tips here. I just go again, I just show you up full, see how it works on the details and how it go down to get more faded kind of thing, right? So here you can like in, enhance some details by putting this up, or you can like put this bit down. You can get even more like a nice baby skin uh, tone on, on the skin if you want that, if you go down. But um, depending on what, what uh, the subject is and, the, and depending on the photo, you can play around with this. So I would try it with this. I try to play around with this up around here. Dehaze, you can also play around with. I just try to go all the way up. You see, it's kind of like the same feeling as the saturation. Here it gets very, very hazy and very smooshy here. So, and then vignetting, just show you again, just go all the way in, go all the way up. So this is the differences as well. You can maybe use it a little bit, depending on if you want to drag the, the eye of the viewer down there, because there's something that's quite important for us to know. It is that uh, when, when a viewer is looking at a photo or when you and I just look at a photo, the main thing that our eyes are gonna focus on straight away is the places that is bright and also the places where there is um, like the places that is in, in, uh, in focus. So brightness and focus is where our eyes are straight uh, focusing on, you know, our, light, our eyes are leading to. So it's good to know, again, that's why it's very uh, important to be, to take an active choice about what should be in focus in my photo. So you can use that, you can use grain as well, get a bit more grainy, all the way up, all the way down. Might be a bit hard to see here though. Um, these are some of the main thing here. If you take a photo with a high ISO, you could use this thing called noise reduction. It kind of like washes it a bit out so it doesn't get that grainy. So if you've taken, for example, a star photo with, I don't know, ISO 2000, ISO 4000, then you could use the noise reduction as well to like to get a bit more smooth instead of being so grainy. So depends on what you like, but of course, it's just to show you some different examples. So let's just uh, play with this because we just put this bit down here. And um, there's so much more here as well, but these are just some of the main things that I would like to show you because you can get, uh, you can really get far with this. Maybe even, oh, I can't do this. Okay, in, in the in the in the Lightroom class, you can see the before and after photo, but uh, here I just want to show you here. You can put inversions. 
down to the right. Oh yeah, maybe actually. Uh, Information oh, here. Yeah. Oh yeah, maybe it's just. <laughs> if you guys can't see for uh, for the for the for the, the with the small, uh, I can see the the screens of the people. But yeah, you can play. There's so much more to do with this. You can play around with. One more thing I would like to show you, though. Let's go. But let's go a bit higher here. The one thing I'd like to show you is uh, let's play with this. This is called a gradient filter. And this is like, it's like a curtain you can drag over the photo. You see this? And when you do this, let's say, let's go down in exposure, for example. So you have this and you can actually see where it works. So on, let's see here, boom. On, on the bottom side, it, where it's very, very red, it's like 100% effects. In the middle of the line, it's like 50% effect. And on the top of it, it's 0%. So it's like a faded out. You can either, for example, sometimes it's nice to drag the, to like lead the, the eye of the viewer to a certain place. You can use this to like, for example, the foreground, I use that quite a lot to like make the foreground a bit dark because then the eye gets lead, like it's leading over to, um, to, to, the, to the thing, to the subject that is in focus. So for example, you can go a bit down in exposure, that should be fine. Then you get this, you see the differences, boom even if you go over here. So for example here, because I would like to get the, the boat in focus here, you can do that. And you could also maybe go a little bit up here. We can, we played around with the, with the colors, with the temperature. So even here, I will think I'll try to drag, to drag out the, the orange of the colors here. And another thing I would like to show you is, for example, if we just do a basic, uh, basic adjustment, basic uh, editing, I would say something like this could could work completely fine um, with this photo. I would say uh, you can always do some extra details, maybe even like uh, use another filter like the radial uh, filter, where you can like drag around, and then you can just drag around the boat, and then everything that's outside of the circle. Right now, it's inside the circle right here. Uh, you got it here. We could say okay, inside the circle, I would like to put up the exposure a little bit, not too much because then you can see the difference, but a little bit because then it gets a bit brighter there. And again, we would like to lead the eye over to the thing that is bright. So you could do this just a little bit, a little bit, just to, just to, to get the view of it. But the, again, it's also a detail that you need to be aware of because if you want, if you're doing this, you don't want it to be that uh, that recognizable. Yeah, you don't want it to be this like this. It will be too much, and it will be too easy to see that you've done it. So it's a, it's all about in the details. So a little, little bit, but it gets a little bit right. So that's something that you could do. Um, again, there's so much more to do with this photo as well. But but we are trying to uh, uh, not to spend too much time on it. But I think that I could do with the next photo. Let's try to take this for example. Is another thing that you could do is that's something called presets. And in presets, let's see where it is. Boom, here. Boom, 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 boom. You see, you get, you have all these items here. You have all this as well. You can even go for even the, like the basic color. You can go for it for this Adobe landscape. Let's see if you can see some differences between the color. And you can see maybe even like portraits, you see the standard. The vivid is maybe it's small details, but maybe you can see the differences between the standard like this and the vivid. So it already from the beginning here, it uh, creates some difference here. But in the bottom here, we have the presets. If that's something that you would like to do like a quick edit on your photos, you can either choose a preset and say, boom, that's it. Or you can just choose it as like a new starting point. Just like saying, hey, let's just go on the auto and press that. Boom, like this. Okay, let's use this as a starting point. That is something that you could work with, but let's go over and try to play around with the presets. They are, for example, there's a, there's a lot of different ones. He, these are some that I have already here, but these ones, the color, creative and black and white, and also the curve and grain, these ones are, uh, are something that is included in the app. So if you have the color here, I just wanna show you quickly. This is the natural. You can even like brighten up. Then it already does uh, some some uh, adjustments. 
You can also have the high contrast like this, see how it changes the photo, high contrast and detail, or vivid where it gets more colors out of it, or like a matte, like a faded look here. You can also go into creative and get some other ones. For example, I, I've been playing a bit around with the vintage one. I kind of like the, the look with this or the warm contrast. You see, this is the before, like with and without, without and with the, um, with the preset, flat green. So this is something that you can play around with as well, depending on what feeling, what mood, what uh, story you would like to tell with your photo. So let's just for fun, just play around with, let's say, let's play with this warm contrast, boom. Let's try to play around with this. You can also go in black and white. There's some different ones here as well, if you're into more the black and white feel as well. But the presets are just pre-made uh, uh, adjustments. You can say that. So pre-made settings, you can kind of say presets, okay? So now this is our new uh, starting point, boom. This is like, this is how I would like to play around with it. Again, we can go down in the white balance, say around, say how, how it would look like this. Let's go for the cloudy look. Okay, this, it gets a bit more warmer. Uh-huh, let's play around with the vibrance. How does that look? It gets a bit here. You can even go a bit down, then, you, then it gets a bit more faded, a bit more faded look. Let's play around, around with that just for fun. And let's see. Let's go around with clarity as well. You see it now, I just go all the way up just to, to let you guys know how it looks. Uh-huh, versus all the way down. Let's just play around with it and, and see how it looks with this. And then we could go down, maybe a bit down in highlights. Is then you see the, the sun gets more uh, in focus here, but if you go out, it gets a bit more bright here, but it feels like you're almost standing in the sun and you're like, or in the, in the forest and you get the sun in your eyes. Play around with the shadows as well. Play up, play down, differences, and with the contrast. So for example, just for this short edit, boom, you can play around with this and say, okay, well, now I have a feeling. I have tried to create a mood in the photo, um, a warmness into it, and there's so much more to play around with. But this is just like an, an example. Um, so thanks for sending in the photos. Now we're almost done, guys. We are almost done. So let's just... Go and share this. Then I'll just share the last few uh, slides that I have because now it's getting time for the challenge. And I hope you guys are ready. Yeah. Everything you can do on Lightroom CC, you can do on mobile. Exactly. Yeah. That is so true. I'm just getting uh, something in my ear saying that uh, <laughs> uh, everything that you do in Lightroom CC, you can do on your mobile as well. So this is actually quite cool. So all the stuff that I just showed you, you can go and sit on your phone with your, with your photos and edit yourself as well. And again, a lot of this stuff is also important to play around with it, test it out. If you're not sure how it works, then go all the way up, and then go all the way down just to see how the difference, it, 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 what differences it makes. But now just to sum up the whole thing, my, um, uh, all this fo the photo tips, let's just put it into three categories before the shoot, during the shoot, and after the shoot. Before, make sure to plan and go out, research your location, and make sure to check the weather forecast. Check out Google Maps, check out the time for sunset and sunrise, but also what gear should you should bring. Make sure that you have the gear that you need so you don't stand out there and be like, oh, dang, I should have brought. That's so just super, super sad. During, again, depending on what, what photos you want, bring your phone, bring, your, uh, bring your, uh, your camera, and also try to be creative. Look around you, look around in the, in, in the, in the landscape uh, and on the spot where you are. Try to find some different angles. Try to get low. Normally, we are always looking at, at, the, um, at the world around us from our point of view, which is standing most, most of the time. But what, if, what, if, what about if you go all the way down? Uh, get close to the ground, for example. It creates a new perspective and gets more interesting because it's not the usual. So um, make sure to bring that. Make sure to, again, bring a practical bag and the extra batteries, really important. And be aware of the composition as well. Play around with the different uh, focuses, the perspective, and also try to anticipate 
different interesting stories or situations when you're photographing people. When you get back, make sure put put the the photos on your computer or on your phone, uh, depending on what your prefer what your preferences are. Make sure to find your favorites and try to edit them in an editing software. Give them a, a personal touch, and then I would definitely say then you have the best uh, the best way to to get some better photos and some better results. So, and this slide, I would definitely, I'll make sure to share this in my Instagram as well. So don't worry. But the thing is, Q and A. We'll do that in a second. But before we do the Q and A, I would like to give you the challenge, because I'd like to encourage you guys to go out and try to test out the, some of those uh, photo tips yourself. So, feel free to use those tips and tricks. Try to go out and take a photo where you try to play around with, okay, give yourself a challenge and be, okay, I need to create a certain mood or I need to, I would like to try to tell a certain story with this and try to go home, select the, your favorites, try to edit them. And then you can actually win a gift card worth of 500 Danish kroner to Woody, uh, which is a super cool clothing brand. They make this, uh, uh, this is a, a nice Danish clothing brand that do merino wool. And for example, this t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, it's super, super nice. And this is some of the clothes that I'm wearing all of the time when I'm on my outdoor trips. So I can definitely highly recommend this. But in order to be like, oh my God, how do I win? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. Because in order to win, you have to make sure to go and follow me. Also follow Woody and make sure to upload your photo before Tuesday next week okay so it's certain time make sure to tag me and tag woody as well um and then i will announce the winner on wednesday next week at four o'clock so go and do this um this is just an extra special treat for you uh because it could be so fun to uh, to have you guys get out there and uh, i just had this challenge in danish for the danish people and there were so many creative photos that came in and it was so cool to see. So I really hope that you guys would like to uh, to join this as well. And uh, I can see Liban, you have a question. Yes, question. That time, is the time Danish time? Remember, I'm in New York City. Yeah, it, yeah. Danish Danish time? Time? Okay. yeah. <laughs> I don't it, have a lot of time left. <laughs> no, that's cool. Uh, of course, it is Danish time. Yeah, I'll make sure to put some stuff uh, up on the Instagram as well. So there'll be for more info there. But yeah. So that, that was uh, actually everything from me. So uh, right now I would like to ask you guys, do you have any last questions before we're finishing off for the day? Then uh, you are more than welcome to share them with me. I hope, I hope you learned something new, at least. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> at least that's, uh, that's, that's my main goal for this. Um, so anybody has any questions? Are you, uh, I hope you feel like that you would like to participate in the challenge. It could be fun. It could be really fun to see what you guys could create. So get out there and get creative. It would be super cool to see what you could bring. You're welcome, Liban. Thank you for joining. <laughs> cool. No, my pleasure. Yeah, I'm in school actually. So I, uh, the kids that just left, but oh, okay. a couple of kids are in the building. Ah, cool. I didn't want to miss it. I didn't want to miss this at all. It's really informative. So I really appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Thanks. Well, then, if uh, if uh, there's no one else who has any questions, then I would just like to say thanks a lot for taking your time. Uh, I would really love to do this some more. And I'll let you guys know when my next live session will be. And if you have time, get out there. Get outside. Try to play around and look to the northeast. There'll be some meteor showers. 20 meteors per hour is quite crazy. And uh, don't worry, yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys know, I'll do a live session just on star photography so you can get ready for the next meteor showers because don't worry, there will be more coming this year, every year, so it's good. But um, yeah, thanks again. Go out, uh, check uh, Woody, check out Woody, it's cool. Check, uh, follow me on uh, Instagram as well. There'll be more info, I'll put up some slides as well. And also go in and uh, check the, my YouTube channel, the Dan Wilson Photography, where I will put up the video from today as well. Thanks a lot for joining. It was a pleasure to see you guys and hope to see you soon. Stay safe.